So uh, I wrote some new rules uh, called Who's the Best Boy? They're rules for dogs and dungeons and stuff. So we're going to test those out this session. If you're foolish enough to bring your dogs in. Oh, they're here. Of evil. Um, oh, yeah. Thanks for the heads up and the plenty of time to read those before the session, by the way. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I think I got that as I was coming down here to sit down. Well, that's the best. That's the best sort of rules. Um, okay. Putting the test in play testing. That's right. That's right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining episode 32 of the Gray Brotherhood actual play campaign. 30 years ago, we were comrades at the West Point War Games Club. Now we've come together again to play Adventurer, Conqueror, King System, Imperial Imprint, or Axe 2. If you're just now joining the campaign, be sure to check the description below for a link to the annals of the Grey Brotherhood. Anytime you need a refresher, you can check the annals to review everything that's come before. We resume the adventures on the morning of 27th Ganethalin 381 Imperial Year. Prior day, the Grey Brothers discovered the fetid pit in the Luzon Forest, and as dawn rises, they are preparing to delve it. Is it a pit or is it a cave? Well, I'm going to describe that for you. Um, yeah, so in the Luzon forest, concealed within a shadowy dale of wild ash and twisted oak trees, you've come upon the ruins of a Zaharan shrine. Of the once proud marble structure, all that remains is a 25-foot-tall black colossus of some ancient warrior king standing on a 40-foot by 30-foot stone tile floor. A gaping hole punctures the stone tiles just in front of the colossus, from which an evil miasma emanates. So it is, in fact, a pit. Is the miasma, is that more like a feeling of badness, or is it like a green, cloudy nastiness? Or um, It is both, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So you're welcome to walk up and look down into the hole if you'd like. So it's first we ought to... The hole. Does it look somewhat natural or by design, or does it just look like a sinkhole? Like, does it look like it was supposed to be there in front of the statue? No, it does not. It looks like uh, an earthquake tore it open or something, or a great impact or something like that, or a sinkhole. Remind me, did we ever do something to use that uh, perpetual light? No, we, we still have it. Might come in handy. Um, possibly a good time, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to suggest that I walk forward with a lit torch. And, uh, you know, if it is truly just a, a chasm pit, drop the torch in and see what's in it. All right, Pippin, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, the. oh, I agree. That's a good, good, that's, a good that, that's a good that's a good plan. <laughs> All right. So I'll break out a, a torch out from uh one of the, the pack mules and light it up and uh Look cautiously Look approach before dropping it just Get yeah, sense. I'll look down, and what do I see out? Sure. So um, you look down a look down the hole, and um, so it leads the gaping hole leads to a thirty foot drop where you see um, a uh, murky pool. Um, with greenish floating scum covering the waters of the pool. Rising out of the murky pool are three large stalagmites. And, um, and it seems at the edges of your vision that hanging upside down from the ceiling, um, not that many feet from you, are many, many, many bats. Okay, I uh, step back from the, the hole, turn and relay that information to the rest of the party. Um, 
Guys, I, I'm not sure if we disturb the swarm of bats, if they will be hostile or not. Yeah. What do you guys think about setting up a little perimeter and using the thieves and this and the explorers to try to find another entrance? Maybe there's a staircase, something else. Okay. If nothing else, don't we have some rope with us? We do. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't hurt to spend 10 or 15 minutes quartering the area to see if there is another way in 20 or 50 yards close. Okay. And I'll keep a guard on it while you guys um, look around and Willie can back me up with some magical awesomeness. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so you guys begin, uh, the clearing itself is not very large. Um, as I said, there's a 40 foot by 30 foot paved area. There's a 25 foot tall statue and, um, that's about it. So, uh, other than that, you could sort of try and search around in the forest, I suppose. What, where would you guys like specifically to search? We were just, I was thinking somewhere around, a. 50 to 100 and 100 foot radius around the hole. We're just look, we're looking for any sort of other entrance. Okay. All right. Maybe especially where the grass is or where like where there's foliage lumped over things where something could be hidden. Um, Considering maybe. like a spiral it, path around it or something just to see if yeah. right on the other side of a tree there is like a hidden door or something like that. Or another staircase? Maybe maybe underneath the next to the statue, underneath the statue, behind the statue. Did the cave look natural? It, I'll, I'll ask Higlack. Did it look like a natural cave or did it look, look like it was, um, you know, something that was part of the temple? Dune. Oh. It looked much. like a natural cave. Okay. Um, all right. And so you, guys, the- you guys have completed a 10 minute survey of the area and um, you. Do not see uh, any other entrances. Yes, I'd like to s- study the statue while okay. they're quartering, um, since I'm right there close to the pit anyway. All right, that's fine. Uh, you have, um, do you have lore mastery? No. Yes, yeah, Zahar. Just... Well, I have, yeah, I have the black lore of Zahar. You have black lore of Zahar. And you also have your imp. Yeah, and I have theology too. Okay. So, um... I don't have that on my abilities for some reason. So, uh, Zahar whispers in your ear, the statue is the great sorcerer king, Memnesir, consort of the famous Semiramis who murdered the queen and seized her throne. And then he ruled until he was murdered by Darjul. Eh, look, the statue depicts him weeping. He was weak and soft and felt bad about killing Semiramis. You are a fount of, of information. Thank you, Zahak. Yes. So uh, from where you're standing, um, go ahead and focus on that. And I'm going to... All right. So you now should be able to see the abandoned shrine. See a fetid pit? Yeah. I got an error message when it loaded. It's a canvas drawing not uh, failed or something like that. I'll I'll refresh real quick. Anybody else? Yeah, mine mine took a while. It just just finally reloaded or loaded up, but it's, it's there now. No. I can I can see the uh, the tactical map. Okay, so you can see the big, big gaping hole, the big statue. No, yeah. I, I can. Yes. Okay. No, oh, looks like we're losing everybody. I see Avaro next to some roots or a tree, and a coffin. What? What? Oh. 
he's not there. I don't know how he got there. I am seeing something totally different than what I should be. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be seeing. Yeah, I, I am seeing I am seeing a gaping hole. The map texture is kind of a greenish brown. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Raymond is on the uh, the south part of the of I the, pasted uh, it into Discord. If that helps. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing it now. So what I was seeing was like way off somewhere else. It was odd. I Avaro somehow got dropped over there by me and I don't know how, but whatever. Don't worry about us. <laughs> yes. Now you now it's been spoilers. There are other rooms. Yeah. yeah. We knew that. We knew there's well, you, you said it you said it was your favorite one. I figured it wasn't gonna be a one off. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just really fun and creepy. <laughs> So um, you guys had asked about whether or not you needed rope. So there are actually um, long black tendrils of vine thick with creepers that dangle down into the pit. So it would be very easy to shimmy down if that's what you'd like to do. You could, of course, also tie a rope around the statue and descend. It's only 30 feet. So that's, that's easily handled. The main thing, of course, is that the bottom of the pit is uh, looks to be water with... Um, a foul greenish uh, muck atop it, uh, except where the stalagmites rise up through. So, well, okay. let's, let, let's we be can't see like a shore or anything like that. Um, it looks like the tunnel, the cave below has two exits. Uh, one is still mucky and wet, and one uh, dries up. Okay, so. Let us be clear, Crusaders do not shimmy. <laughs> Fair enough. How close is the uh, is the is the the pit opening to the dry exit? Uh oh! I see. Like, if you were to shimmy down, how close are you? Yeah, uh, about fifteen feet. You know, we we could chop down a tree and drop it down in there. I mean, that's what I was. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad idea because that would very much secure our uh, method of egress as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're going to throw a tree in there, I, I suggest we could just drop a rock or something, and we could see. You can tell the difference between a shallow pond and a deep pool, so that might help. Us assess if it's a bottomless uh, pool of water or something like that, or like a well. Right. It might also help us assess whether or not uh, we've got some sort of horrific creature waiting to, uh, you know, attack us when we uh, descend into it as well. Yeah. We should drop a morsel of meat or something into it along with the, the rock. It's not a bad idea. It's actually a really good idea. Well, we also have a flying thing that speaks. Oh. Who's this? Me? See? Famili familiarity. That's all it takes. Pretty soon he will, he, will, he will come to rely on you. Yes, you're right. Your services are indispensable. Tell we, me could, we could perhaps uh, we could have a sahak go down a, a, sh a short ways and then look for something to secure the rope to and then we could create a diagonal line down to avoid the water completely do we want to try to spook the bats first so we take care of them i was or? i was thinking about spooking the bats too <laughs> we're on a we're on a wavelength well, casting this <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know hmm. get them out because if those things spook us while we're trying to descend, I can see one of us, you know, losing our grasp on the rope of the tendrils and plunging. Yeah, <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> so we might well, be able to, uh, you know, kill two birds with one stone by dropping a largish rock into the water and seeing if that spooks the bats, and also if anything moves and reacts to you know the water having you know ripples in it uh, kill two bats with one stone 
Maybe it's time for Thunderclap. Oh, shit. <laughs> Kaboom, right into the right into the cluster of bats underneath us. Yeah, and, uh, and, and then let's see if anything, anything comes yeah. down. All right, I'm going to step back <laughs> from the edge. We won't be yeah. sneaking in after that, but you know what? I think we would give ourselves away eventually, any. Yeah. Either way. All right. Do I, have, this could be an option. do I have everybody on the map correctly now? Anybody anybody missing anybody? I think we're missing like one hunting dog. Um but I only see one, so that's there's there should Zelik. be there should and be one hunting dog on the table is Zelikus. Oh, and there's Isk. Yeah, and then there should be Herman and Harold, right? I think of the names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not and seeing the war, the war myself dog. yet. Am I oh, we still the war dog too? I thought You're the war dogs were dead. Yeah. No, I got another one. Oh, okay. Does he have a name? No. Do you have a good name? <laughs> well, I've I've descended to Herman for the for the most recent one, so <laughs> maybe Grant has a good name. Weird. I, I thought I had dropped you, but I don't see you. So let me bring you in, Turnius. I, I don't know what happened. What, what's the name of our new uh, our new uh, um, thank you paladin? Is it Destria? Destria, Rod. Destria. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I don't. Oh wait a minute. It's this male model. Yep. Wait. A no. Wait. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. The one that says Aguilor says Destria Dracon. No. Down here. Oh, that yeah. one down there. Okay, got it. I see. All right. Same model as uh, Aguilar. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so someone needs to tell me exactly how many dogs you have. Sorry. There should be two more hunting dogs and one war dog. So a total of three hunting dogs plus Isk. I know he has a different icon. Yeah. Okay. Who let the dogs out? All right. One more hunting dog. No. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. Oh, they're on top of each other. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, the dogs seem very uneasy, obviously. Okay. What are you guys doing? All right. If no one's going to stop me, I'm going to yeah, throw a uh, thunderclap down Go for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see what else comes up. Maybe, maybe, maybe before you do that, Raymond should yell at his loud voice to Grey Brotherhood. <laughs> Salutations from the Grey Brotherhood. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, like to announce ourselves, might as well. Let me say, though, that we, we should probably all take a good step back from the edge. Yeah. So we're not right at the edge, just in yeah. case we get yeah. a uh, collapse, a cave in. So. Okay. We'll just so say we're I, you know we're a little bit of ways, right? Can I prefend? <laughs> all, um, all right, let me move you all back. The reason uh, the reason I'm keeping it on is, is that technically you guys are sort of outside the map, and so if I let folks wander around, it can accidentally um, sort of reveal. Oops, exactly, just like that areas that we don't need to have revealed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Terenius drops his thunderclap in the hole. Okay. Yeah. So, go ahead and roll the damage for that, please. So, yeah. Oh, no. I'm just making my best, best estimate on, you know, where the cluster of bats was thickest, according to whatever Higlack told me. Yeah. So, yeah, here we go. Thunder in the hole. <laughs> Where does that say? It doesn't say. So should I just roll a, a single, single one d six plus one? Uh, I yep. actually. Yep, d six plus one. Yeah. Oh, brutal. Oof. Okay. Yeah, the wrong guy selected. That was me. Mm 
Okay. All right. The thunderclap goes off with a deafening sound. Um, the bats immediately begin to freak out, um, and we will go into uh, the swarms of bats, that is. Um, it looks like you hit many of the bats, but not all of them, and we go into them. <laughs> so let's, um, let's jump into that. Okay. Could we have prefended like I was saying? <laughs> I don't know what you mean by prefend. Oh, you know, the, the fending off swarms? Yeah, everyone's like ready. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So I think okay. you, you were <laughs> you were fending off swarms. Um, all right. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting use case because basically everyone should be ready, assuming that things are going to come boiling out and attack them. So they're not really yeah. caught flat-footed here. Right. All right, so um, Skandar is up. I think she will fend. Oh, I'm sorry. It re-rolled when I hit begin combat. So Toothy Terano is up. Yeah, he'll be warding against bats. Oh, warding, that's okay. the right word. Yeah. What the? <sighs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't even know what, what is going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's like I re-rolled like three times or something. Yeah, I'm getting, I was, it was lagging and I was trying to hit a button. Anyway, all right, so Skandara is actually up. I assume she's, she's warding or she's, she's warding or what is she? She's warding. Okay. All right. And then um, next up is Aria. She is warding. Okay, Toothy. Warding. Andravis. I will ward. Terenius. I'm going to ward also. Okay. Griffin. Ward. All right. I'm just going to assume you're warding unless you tell me otherwise. Uh, is there is there any difference between warding and taking the defend action? Defend action doesn't help against swarms. So yes. Okay. So Castanus will take the defend action. You heard me say it doesn't help against yeah. one. Yeah, just in case something else comes out. Okay. All right. Scavenus, the war dogs can't really ward, so they're just delaying. Um, who's handling the dogs, by the way? Who's the dog handler? Um, I have Zelikus and I think Herman. Grant I has Harold. I have the war dog and uh, Isk through Scavenus. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So first up is this bat swarm. All right. So one of the bat swarms, um, it seems that the thunderclap has deafened its echolocation ability. And so mm -hmm. it is just flitting around uh, down below in a chaotic um, chaotic direction, um, not able to uh, effectively target you guys. Okay, Raymond. Isk, Usman, hunting dog. Okay, another bat swarm. Okay, yep. so this one, uh, this one has made its saving throw, so it bursts up out of the cave, and I'll roll randomly to see what direction it flies. And it flies nine o'clock. So it goes right here. So that looks like Scavenus and Skandara and Andravis. Okay. So, um, okay. Plus four bonus saving throw. Yep. So when your initiative comes up. Okay. Very good. All right. So um, we had. Uh, Scavenus hasn't gone yet. Nope, Scavenus, Scavenus has gone. So Scavenus, go ahead and make a saving throw plus four. And also roll d4 damage. For blast? Uh, paralysis. And then Andravis the same and Skandara the same. Okay. 
Okay, Scavin has failed. Okay. What what kind of damage is it? Is it piercing damage? Yes. Okay, okay you guys. Right. I don't think we rolled above a four. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Starting off really strong, guys. Okay, so um, so Scavenus takes five points of damage from the bat swarm. Andravis takes four points. Skandar takes. Four points. Also, they are all mad, as in the spell Incite Madness, as they are desperately swinging their weapons in any random direction. Uh, so next round on your initiative, you will probably to see what your character does as the bats are all around you. Um, and uh, now I need you guys to each roll D4 for damage against the swarm. I'll just do a 2D4 for both of my characters at once for simplicity. Sure. Four points total from me. Okay. And the third character? Here he goes. Three. Okay. Well, fortunately for you guys, that was enough damage to destroy the um the damaged uh, bat swarm. So um, it disperses uh, under your attacks. You guys are no longer maddened because you are outside the area of the swarm. Okay. Um, looks like nobody else. The other bat swarm is still staying down below and um, being crazy because it can't hear anything. Okay. All right. Next round. Anybody casting? Um, yeah, I, I think I'll have Raymond. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me think about this. Um, and the. Oh, hold on, because it's a saving throw that we have to roll against. Mm -hmm. And let me see. The group blessing is the. Holy blessing that gives uh, that allows me to bless. Uh, Holy blessing doesn't give a bonus to all saves. It just gives a bonus to saves versus fear. Versus fear, and this is paralysis. Okay, got it. All right. You know, I I, I will cast. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll cast spell. Okay, what are you casting? Uh, physical protection against uh, piercing. Okay. Yeah, we got to minimize uh, the number of hit points we lose <laughs> at the beginning. I know. Okay, well, it looks like everybody is just ready to ward when things come up them. So let me see if... Um... Uh, Scavenus will move back away from the, away from the open. All right, so the bats have recovered their hearing. So uh, this bat swarm comes swooping up, and we'll roll randomly to see what direction he flies. He is going to go in one o'clock, so he goes right there. And so that is going to... That, right in the doggies. Yeah, it's going to hit... Uh, Griffin and the doggy. So the doggies can't ward because they're dogs. They don't know how to do those things. So I need the two dogs and um, I guess they all show as Zelikus, but we'll assume Zelikus is the one closest to Andrava, so it's the other two. So the two dogs, the Warhound, and Griffin, please make saving throws. Let's just roll 1d20 if you don't have the... um. Here's um, Herman. Oh. Herman has failed. Oh, that is sad. Okay, you guys are rolling exceptionally well. I'm getting out all my bad rolls now. <laughs> yeah, get it out of the way. <laughs> Just get it out of the way right now. Okay. Herman takes five points of damage. 
The Wolfhound takes four points of damage. Okay. Well, Herman only has five points. Very sad. Oh. Oh, he was the bestest boy. All right, so Herman has been reduced to zero hit points. Very sad. Okay. And there was another one there as well. Who was that one? Is that, is that the dog? Yeah. We named yeah, the oh, dog Herman? Yeah. Oh, what, what, what was the other one? Oh, the other one must be Harold. Harold. I, okay. Yeah. So roll for Harold. All right. I got it. And it's uh, paralysis. Yep. Plus four. Oh. Okay. He succeeded. All right, so. All right, I'm just updating the tokens here so that Herman, the late benated Herman and Harold are now. Harold the dog. Okay, and then uh, Griffin, did he make his safe, please? Oh, Griffin too, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh. I find it funny we have dogs named Herman and a human named Griffin. I mean, like, what's up? Uh, right, so Griffin also fails. Very sad. So Griffin takes Ooh. five points of damage from the bat swarm. And also all of them are now maddened and desperately attacking or doing crazy chaotic things on their next coming action. And uh, I need Griffin to roll 1d4 for damage to the swarm warding it off. Three. Okay. The swarm is greatly diminished, but still enough to cause havoc. Um, all right. Zelikus, Destria, Higlak, Isk, and the last swarm. All right. So the last swarm comes flying up. And we will roll to see what direction he moves. And he is going in five o'clock. So he comes right there, hits Terenius. Uh, Destria and Kelsurius. Okay, so each of you guys, please make your save. You get plus four because you. Okay, Terenius uh, wards them off without issue. Did you say Kelsurius also? All right, awesome. Yeah. That was uh, Destria. I, for some reason, it's coming up as War Dog. Oh, it's because I have that one clicked. Sorry. All right. So you guys do great, and you manage to really fend these things off. And um, so go ahead and roll your damage. It's three die four. One die four from each of you guys. You guys are looking towards Andravis and company like, oh, that's how not to do it. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Three. Max, no. Go see your mother. That was for Calcereus. Okay. All right. That swarm has been um, that swarm has been destroyed. So it is um, okay. And this last swarms morale minus two. Six. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So um, next round. Any spell casting? No spell casting. I don't know. All right. So the bat. No, no, spe no spell casting from me. The bat swarm spells flies off uh, into the forest. Okay. Um, most of the, it was, you know, there's a lot of dead bats now littering, uh, around the, uh, pit. Um, most of the rest that you didn't kill, you've driven off and they've dispersed into the forest. Well, should we check on Herman? Someone <laughs> check on Herman. <laughs> yeah. Mean, who's that? Well, who's that? Sure we get staffing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, we can, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we can staff them. Let's go. 
All right, so he gets plus four for D8 hit dice. He's at exactly zero, makes it plus nine. Staffing makes it plus 10. Healing proficiency, she's got two ranks, so that makes it plus 12 treatment Is time. It, does that count as one for animal husbandry? Counts as one, thank you. Yeah, 11. And then treated within one round of injury makes it 13. So he's at plus 13. He has a good chance of being okay. Come on, boy. 26. Oh, wow. Okay. And then, yeah. And, and then give a D6 roll. Uh, okay. So he has ghostly visions of lost litter mates that flicker before his eyes <laughs> as he <laughs> awakens somewhat confused. He's at one hit point. He, he, he see all the dogs that were slain in that bandit attack, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. He sees a long line of noble canines who've fallen in battle before him. And uh, and they say, it is not yet your time to enter Dog Hala. And he is sent. <laughs> hey, can we have uh, Hyapsara heal some of the wounded? Yeah, I'll stick everybody. Well, let's... Uh, yeah, I want to avoid yeah. staffing because we that's like super emergency. I see. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I just want to do you want to spend a, spend basically an hour or so um uh, actually just doing healing checks on the wounded first. Yeah, that gives us we, we, we time to wait and see if anything else comes out too. And yep. chop down a tree if we want to try doing the tree method or something like that, you know. Yeah. Work other part other people the rest can of the guys chop down a tree. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so why don't you go ahead and make your healing checks? Just make your say who you're rolling on to heal and make the roll. It's one d three. Is that right? For for comfrey, yes, it's one d three. Are you using comfrey or are you using healing checks? Are you using the healing proficiency? I'm oh. Confused. Well, we can do we can do both. Right. Yeah. So why don't we start with comfrey first and see where we see where we end up? Okay. And so you have enough comfrey to do that? Yes. So first, we start with how quick, yeah. how quick is Comfrey? Okay, so Scavenus heals three, and so he's at four hit points. Uh, Comfrey is one round. Okay, yeah, that's preferable because I I have a my spell is running for six turns. So if we can do one round, that's best. But if we have to wait, then that's fine too. So here's Andravis. Okay. So Andravis healed how many? I updated him already. Okay. Uh, here's Skandara. Wah, wah. Okay. Just here's keep Griffin. rolling, I guess, yeah. Okay, Griffin's at five. And do we want to use one on the dog, or do we want to say, hey, dog, why don't you hang out with the horses while we go in? <laughs> I mean, you haven't told me how you're going to get the dogs in yet anyway. Yeah. yeah. So for now, I'd say let's just leave the dog with the horses. Um, well, we can lower them by ropes, couldn't we? We can make a sling. Yeah. Okay. I so mean, should I do Comfrey on the dog? So. Okay. Yeah. So here's Herman. Ah, he's only at two now. Okay. <laughs> I don't see a character sheet for Herman on the from there for me to update. It's right there. Okay, so I, mean, I, I see him on the map, but I don't see him on the character. He doesn't have one on. He doesn't oh. have one on the character list. He just okay. is on the map. There's only one okay. dog in the character list. So. Got it. So I'll just I'll just I'll just track manually that he's at two. No, no, you can just update it. You click on the icon. Oh, and it brings up his character that. sheet. Yeah, Herman, the Slayer of Vermin. See, so I put him at three. Yeah. So right okay. now I had Scavenus, be Andravis, Griffin, Herman, and Skandara that we use Comfrey on. One, two, three, four, five. All right. You all you have Tel Sirius is also no, that's right. None of them got hurt. That's right. Okay. Awesome. All right. Is your that that took uh less than a turn. What do you want to do? Well, what do you guys think? I mean, about having a and a delve and a because we can't 
we can't bring, I think, most of the dogs and at least all the mules with us. Should we have someone stay topside? That's fine with me. Yeah. Probably a good idea. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be oh. able to get, yeah, we're going to run into the problem of not being able to get anyone in a fight anyways. Why? Because of the, the frontage being narrow? Yeah. And yeah. in a confined space? I just feel like if we leave one person above, it's most likely they could no. be, they're weak. No, we, no, two, we should leave two. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, battle buddy system. But uh, I'm thinking yeah, maybe. Least two. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe Uthman Barjuba. I mean, he is a heavy calf guy. We're leaving horses. He's probably in the best position to, you know, control the horses, honestly. And then somebody else. I don't know. Well, I, I can so close. Sc Scavenus is still injured, and he doesn't have a lot of hit points anyways, so I'm kind of thinking about leaving him up. Okay. And that way, you know... Yeah, well, we, yeah, should, um, we, should, we, should, we should bring at least one dog just for ability to, like, smell. And... Because uh, the dogs have a better... What? Uh, surprise checks. So... Three. So we should bring at least, we should only, I mean, we should bring at least one dog. And then if we leave the others behind them, you know, that may, that's fine. Yeah. We can bring Zelikus. He's, he's, he's seen a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. It's, it's going stay top side with Scavenus anyways. But that makes sense. Yeah. So do we just want to leave one and leave two back or do we want to leave more than two? Let's just leave the two and along with the the uh, four dogs. Yeah, because we yeah. will have Isk, Harold, Herman, and uh, the war dog remaining behind. I think that that's a, a stout group to keep an eye on the hole and make sure that we've got uh, a safe uh, exfil. Do you, do you think uh, Calcereus would be more helpful to have with us than leaving it behind? Oh, well, we're taking Calcereus. Okay. Yeah, we're we're talking about leaving um, uh, Scavenus and yep. Uthman. Right. I mean, Kelsarius could do either. I mean, he's a he's a thief. We've got Skandara, who's a higher level thief. So yeah. we do have a thief down below. I don't know that we need a thief up above. Um, but uh, well, I think it's fine. Sean was saying that Scavenus is uh, low on hit points. So yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, keep did I say Scavenus? I meant Skandara, or maybe I might be mixing up names. Who's and we could leave Kelsarius up top also. That might. That might be yeah. Leave three of them up there. Just a, as a FYI, Uthman only has five hit points, so we're leaving. There's there's no there's no strength up there if we're leaving them behind. Well, Castanus could stay up top, and then we have like Kelsirius carry a lantern and torch down below. That gives some strength up top. That works yeah. too. Yeah. Your call if you want to miss out on the fun of the fetid pit. Yeah, I was wondering. I'll just, I'll, well, I'll just take two. Th I'll, you know, I, I can control. You want to leave? Uh, we can leave Agalor up above, unless you think he's going to be good to have down below because of the shield wall ability. But I, I'd like to leave somebody who actually has some some uh, survivability up there in case things get rough. I don't know. We want to leave Castanus up there. Remember, he's got 18 hit points. I mean, he can. Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. though, Aglor probably wants to go into the pit because this was his, his vision. Yeah. That's yeah. That's right. That's true. That's I was true. just I was just thinking about you know Griffin being winter, but Griffin would want to go into the pit too for the same reason. So. Yeah, he would. Um, Look here. Here's the. I, I mean, worst case scenario, what we can do is we can set up some of the ropes, and if things look just like absolutely terrible. It's, you know, it's cruel, but we abandoned the mules and abandoned the dogs and the three of us just jump, you know, get down the hole as fast as we can. If something really bad comes topside. Yeah, I'm thinking, 
I guess that's it's a possibility. I'm thinking ambush, and and the, the first warning is you get an arrow strike and five, you know, four or five hit points of damage, and boom, you're dead. So there's not a lot of warning. So that's all. I would like to have somebody up there. I guess. Uh, yeah. You're thinking you want to leave Castus up. Well, Scavenus is up there. I mean, Scavenus has skills at evasion, so um, potentially yeah. um, that might help with that. He's the, yeah, he's an explorer. He can his bonuses are outside, anyways. So, for leaving anybody out, I think Scavenus makes sense for that purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, so who okay, so excited so, upon? Yeah, so then, so then this is the, the stay behind group is Castanus, Scavenus, and Uthman, and, okay. and the dogs and the mules, naturally. And we set up, we set up two ropes. And if things, if things get, I mean, just really bad, the, the three of us get down the hole as fast as we can. Sounds good. What's the plan if we delve into this and time passes and we need to spend the night in the hole? Then we need to spend the night in the hole and we uh, right. improvise, adapt, and overcome. No, I'm just saying, what is the, what's the plan for the people topside? Is there a deadline? Are you going to wait X amount of time and just kind of wait till we come back? Multiple days. I think we should plan not to spend the night down in the hole. But of course, I think it, I, I agree that we need a, a an yes. eventuality plan as well, a contingency. I say oh. one night. Yeah. Wait one night. If it's more than one night, I think it's a problem. So if we don't come out by midday of tomorrow, then the people on the top side should come in after us or flee back home. Either I or. Say flee. I would say we go back, go home. back, go back and get more okay. help and come back. Yeah. And right. Yep. Yep. Because uh, if we weren't enough, <laughs> <laughs> they can they can go back and, and group up the, top. Is it going to do any good? Uh, yeah. The darker shade of gray brotherhood. <laughs> yeah. The Vanguard. The Imperial Vanguard. <laughs> okay, I think that's our plan. All right. All right. Good. It's now 7.40 a.m. Is your intent to shimmy down or slide down for the cleric uh, on the vines, or are you tying off your own ropes? I, I think we'll, we'll we'll tie off our own ropes. Yeah, I like. I don't know. And, uh, we, we never did the investigation of what what what's going on with the pool either. So maybe we should do that. Okay. I, yeah. I think we ever dropped a rock in there or anything yeah. else to see to get a sense of what's what's down there. I want to make sure those stalactites uh, sticking up are just rock and not fingers or something that are going to grab us when we get close. Okay. So I'd like to drop a sizable chunk of something down there. Yeah, big rock. Goes All right. Down. Yeah. Well, Just there's plenty. Careful. There's plenty of rock. So you grab a, a big kind of broken flagstone from you know nearby, and drop it down, and uh, you know falls about thirty feet, hits the water. There's a splash. Um, you know your character is very intelligent. You estimate probably uh, waist deep water. Okay. And I'm going to suggest that for the first person down, go ahead and tie the rope off on, we'll, we'll just, Higlack will volunteer to go first, tie the rope off on my waist and lower me down. That way I'm ready with shield and sword if uh, attacked midway down. Yeah, and maybe you know what we can do? This is if the only doing other rope. We just lower a lantern next to you so that you have a light source, but you can still still do some fighting. You know, if Sounds we do... Good. Okay, that's fine. I was going to think also, we could also... Um, I don't want to send her alone. I don't know that she'd want to go alone, but uh, Skandara potentially could also... She's very agile on ropes. <laughs> could go down as backup. 
to have a second person. Yeah. So if we have three ropes, oh. for example, we could do one with the lantern and then one with Skandar and one with Higlak. So now that there are no bats in there, I wonder if Zahak would, would feel okay with flying down there and tying the rope off to something. What do you think, Zahak? Then we can just... So he sort of shows his little ty Tyrannosaurus hands and is like, Master, I'm not sure that I could secure a rope for your safety, but I could tie the other's ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Your level of intelligence far outstrips your physical capacity. I'm not sure if you've insulted me or not, Master, but I agree. Back to the trapeze act, I suppose. We have to have someone go down. Okay. So Higlack is going to be lowered down. Is that the idea? Yes. All right. That's fine. So Higlack, you are lowered down. And are we also having, are we dropping a lantern and Skandara climbing down as well? Sure. That's what you want to do. And I'll perch the top of the I'll perch at the top of the pit with a with a bow loaded, ready if in case we see some issues. Got it. All right, Skandara, go ahead and make your uh, climbing throw. It's uh, anything but a one. <laughs> My favorite kind of roll. All right. I was about to say, if only James were here for this. Woo! Okay, Skandara, no problem. Okay, you guys are now standing um, in knee high water. Uh, the strange green muck kind of lapping up against your chest um, and the stalagmites looming around you from down here. You can see that the stalagmites are absolutely covered with bat guano. Okay. I, There's a, do I there, notice it? Go ahead, Alex. Say so there is a, uh, a definite um, palpable sense of dread down here. And um, from where you've come down now, you can actually see that the ceiling is covered with pale, clutching white roots that kind of Ooh. come through the dirt. Skandara will... will okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Skandara will tell Piglak to be quiet, and she's gonna do a, she'd like to do a listen check. Okay. Make uh, make a blind GM check for me. The straight D20, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, um, yeah. Yeah. She does hear something. One sec. Woo! Good job, Skandara. <laughs> Hey, guys, really quick, while Alex is figuring out that, we have two vials of holy water to be distributed. We should probably save those to destroy the altar, right? Or we, we need one to destroy the altar, I think. Mm -hmm. Or whatever the sinkhole right. is. So, Skandara, um, you hear what sounds like low moaning coming from the southeast is it approaching or does it sound like it's stationary uh it does not sound like it's approaching it sounds like it's stationary or perhaps receding oh hey Lack, i hear does go ahead <laughs> moaning i hear low moaning i'll, I'll, see, I'll whisper it to higlack and it shall gesture up you know little walking symbol <laughs> or something to try to suggest that she's hearing a sound, but it appears to be retreating. Okay. Um, does she indicate what direction she hears the sound? She's hearing it from the southeast. But okay. Faint and distant. Is that the, the direction that had the 
the the where the pool receded, or is that the pool one? So you should be able to see where the pool recedes, which is here, and then to the southeast, you can see the pool continues here. Okay, well, you guys are now down there. The, the rest of the group is staring at you. What do you want to do? Tie off the sleg stalactites, I think. So. So you're going to tie the ropes at the bottom to stalagmites? Was that the idea? Or was it not? I mean, maybe I misunderstood the plan. Potentially tie them to something so that they're stretched to the side of the pool and not just down into the pool. Yeah, that's, okay. that's no problem. Yeah. All right, so let's yeah. get basically tie it around the stalagmite. Yeah. Okay. Egg Black will do the same. Okay. All right, so that means that anyone who, anyone who falls on their way down will fall onto a stalagmite rather than fall into water. Yep, yeah, but well, the water's only waist deep, so, I mean. Okay, then we'll leave it the way it is. I mean, you know, it's trying to no, visualize. You, you guys have already tied them off. It's great. I love it. Well, I mean, I, 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 mean, I envision this a little bit different than you're describing it. <laughs> I envision it as an angled kind of a thing. Yeah, I was envisioning straight tying it off to the side of the cave to something. If there's nothing to tie it off to. Uh, the I, only I, things to tie it off to are the three stalagmites. You can see it on the map. I mean, it's right no. there. There's well, the idea would be, to, would be not to, to tie it straight down, but to tie it at an angle. So as they're descending, they can potentially get out of the pool without getting, getting get down there without falling into the pool. But if they fall, they'll fall at an angle into the pool. Rather than much, you know, straight prefer down. not to be impaled on a stalagmite yeah. covered with guano. I mean, that's fine. If you so, you basically want to have so you want to have like uh, one is going. Oh, it doesn't let me do it. So, like, you want one rope like that, and then you want one rope coming from this direction over here, and you know, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I mean, okay, that's fine. The stalagmites are very slippery, so. Probably not a safe place to land on, and you can't really get anywhere from the stalagmites. So you you will almost certainly end up in the water unless you land on this particular stalagmite. Don't fall off it, and then make a really impressive standing long jump. See, I could, it, it's helpful to be able to visualize that. So that, none of this sounds like what what I what I had in mind for tying the rope off. Okay. We'll leave them untied then. Okay. Are you guys all able to see the map? Absolutely not. Okay, sc scroll down, Willie. Sc I have. Scroll down. How far down do I have to scroll? I'm I'm quite lost. I just, like, I'm just not seeing it. Are you not seeing when I click? I can see your yellow clicking and, and it's black. I see nothing. Oh, all maybe right. maybe it's so, like Willie, a character. Uh, you know, take your um thing and, and create a square okay. over where we're here, click right where I'm. Click right where I'm clicking, Willie. I think I the challenge is, is we're 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 visualizing a 3D space on 2D, and so that that creates challenges in terms of visualization. Well, it may be part of it, but I have a, I have been un unable to see this the entire time. So, are you able to see it now? Part of it. Okay, I mean it's an isometric map. So. Yeah, yeah. Um. I mean, I can I can paste into Discord what I'm seeing to help you know if you're seeing the same thing. All that's there. <laughs> no, it's yeah, I'm seeing part of it. Part of what? When you say you're seeing part of it, part of the room? Yeah, yeah, I've seen the same thing that that Jonathan just pasted. So it's like okay. a yeah, okay. Okay, so you can see you can see the stalactites rising up. You can see. Yep. The exit is here. Um, the distance is about, as I said, it's about um, 15 feet from the stalagmite to the um, pool, uh, to the edge. Yeah, you know, 15 feet. So, what would you like to do? Well, it sounds like our, our all of our plans to try to secure a safer landing are not working with what we're visualizing. So I would say we just climb down into the muck. And Skandar says the water's fine. <laughs> I guess I'm not understanding what you mean by a safer landing. Safer. Well, 
a place a place to tie it off where you can descend without being impaled and get to the edge of the pool without having to end up in the waist deep muck. I there might be confusing. The, oh, is that the edge of the pool here? I was yeah. thinking this was the edge of the pool, but the green shade changed. Nope. Yeah, okay. The pool is here. Yeah. All right, so yeah. everything else yeah. outside from that ragged shape is just blackness. Is that the intent? Mm-hmm. So we see partial. So that's that's the shape of the pool. It just fills the entire area. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I think we just let's, let's just climb down. You yeah. guys are like, I hate this dungeon. We're going back up. I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah. Yeah, Aglo, oh, I, you can solve this one. No, I had the impression that there was a pool in the center and there was a dry area on the side, so it didn't sound. It doesn't look that way. Yeah, basically no. everything you're seeing is is muck. So uh, is what we got in the very high water. Were, yeah, right there. Okay, right there. correct. Is this the other exit? You said there were two exits. Is this the other one down here? That I'm right seeing? here. Oh, right there. Okay. And is that one you're you're pinging right now, where we heard the sounds from? Mm-hmm. Okay. I gotta see if I can get this visible on the recording because it's just black. Well, I mean, I can just move the party down there. So yep. uh, yeah. I, just, uh, I haven't done so because you guys seem like you didn't want to go down. So go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's classic great thing. Yeah. So. This is what explorer school is like, right? All right. So I need everybody to make one, make a check to see if you make it down safely. It's anything but a one. Andravis has got the Explorer tab. Here's Andravis. Here's Griffin. Now when I'm down, I'll say, hey, um, Raymond, lower down Zelikus to me. And so he can lower him down. And Yeah, all right. But I, I'll oh, hold him on my arms. Oh, you're, you're bringing Zelikus? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just one dog. Yeah, what check are we making? Right. This is uh, this is Raymond. It's a climbing check, so it's just a straight D twenty. Okay, Ray- Raymond. in fact, does not shimmy. He gracefully <laughs> glides down. Yeah, air assault, right? That's right. Oh man, and then uh, this is a Donna. Okay. Kelsurius. Idestria is great. Kelsurius, did you roll Toothy? Hey, Glenn. I just I just rolled for Toothy, but it might come up as Castanus. Uh, it came up as the war dog, but I think oh, you're fine. Right. Okay. All right, Industria. Great. She makes it down. Terenius makes it down. All right. I guess you've all made it down safely. Did Aria roll? Oh, uh, Aria, yeah. She did not roll. Um, uh, 1d20. All right. Okay. So because of the waist high water, um, movement is halved except for Zayadari, who is in the wardress of the Exquisitrix. And for her, movement is reduced by two thirds. Oh. She's like, this is somewhat impractical for spelunking. <laughs> but you look good doing it. It's true. Sacrifices must be made for... No, I'm talking like a Nazca worshiper. <laughs> I think I will hand off Zelikus to Griffin. Griffin's kind of wounded. So um, he probably should stay towards the back until we get to, high, until we get to dry ground. Presuming okay. we get to dry ground. Well, what direction would you guys like to go? What would you like to do? And who has torches? Who's carrying lamps and torches? Okay, so the first is Kelsarius as a lantern. And I think he can carry a torch also, so he can throw it. Okay, so he's got a lantern in one hand and a torch in the other. Uh, right, unless... And then let me check Destria. Okay, so what is he doing with his staff then? Oops. Just sling it. Okay. I, I, w- Willie, it's your, he's your guy. 
I was just say, do you want to run him since he's a thief? Uh, <laughs> he's a thief pretending yeah. to be a wizard. <laughs> I know. I was like, well, okay. I prefer I prefer the term jack of all trades. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, really one of the, not a, not one of these big thugs, and so he hires a thief. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh. Like, well, wow, that's that's a good match. Holy yeah, man. he's an alchemist. He's Personality wise, it's a good match. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My friends say polymath is really the right word. That's a little pretentious, I would say, my good man. Guilty as charged, sir. Okay. Uh, so and, and Destria yep. also has um, a lantern. Okay. So Destria is lanterned up. All right. And that's it. So, so Destria with the Destria with a lantern. Mm-hmm. Kelsarius with a lantern. Yep. And yep. a couple other people have torches here and there. Yeah, and, and Destria will be can be closer to the front because she is a paladin. So I mean, she doesn't like second or third rank. Sure. So does it make sense to have Kelsarius? holding a lit torch and a lantern or should he just have the lantern for now I, I just yeah maybe he could have the lantern and then light a torch when he needs to throw it he... okay so calcereus is holding a lantern and uh industrious holding a lantern no one else had yeah. lanterns and there are no other torches lit good all right yeah, and yeah and industrial will be uh she will, I guess, um, have spear in one hand, the lantern in the other. And her shield then is on her back. A back. Yep. Okay. All right. It's now 8 a.m. Um, so, Newton, you have 30 minutes left in your spell. Okay. And Kyle Sirius is holding his staff in the other hand. Correct. All right. What direction All would right. you guys like to go? Yeah. Do we want to go dry land or we want to go keep staying in the muck? Um, and also the muck is the direction of the moaning that we heard, or that that um, Skandar heard. Once everyone's down here, she can pass on the full detail of what she heard. So we can either go towards the moaning, or we can go towards dry land. <laughs> I, I th- oh, I see what you're saying. Um, uh, it's kind of going towards the moaning. That That's just, yeah. you know. Let's, hey. find, let's find out what it is. And, yeah, uh, that's, that's fair. And let's get uh, myself and Raymond on the front rank. Yep. And uh, that way, if we run across anything particularly horrible, we've got somebody who can withstand the initial onslaught. All right. So, so you guys are we have, welcome to start moving. Should we have Destria and Zadana maybe in the second rank? Yep. Okay. Should we just move one? Or are we going to be moving all the? Like, how do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, I put everyone in a theoretical marching order. <laughs> you, thank you, I don't know if you like it or not. <laughs> while we were resolving that. Yeah. So, r- real, real quick, uh, with the glaive, uh, I can attack from a second from a second rank, correct? Is it Adana? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. That makes sense. Okay, so uh, we'll just have Higlac. We'll we'll have Higlac and um, uh, Raymond can move as the front row, and then yep. uh, we'll drag everyone else behind as we need to. So go ahead and start moving, guys. Is everyone able to see Higlac and Raymond? Yep. yep. I can see. All right, you're making very slow progress, moving at exploration speed through the tunnels. All right, and Alex, just to make sure that I'm seeing correctly, is this another passageway? Um, I mean, there is certainly an indentation in the cave wall there. Okay. I, I just could not tell if it was obviously a passage. Um, so 
I'm going to very cautiously step here and look a little closer at, at this. Um, I mean, it, you you should just see that it, that it comes to an end. Yes, I can see that, um, but it, 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 I, I guess my 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 Northman sense is tingling, and uh, you know my Jutlander, and uh, more standard to check. <laughs> I, I do. I, I I motion for uh, sort of. Uh, if we encounter something here, what do you guys think about? I mean, if we can get it to pursue us about getting back to that open area where we can get most of us into action, if if possible. Yeah, we can do a fighting withdrawal. It depends. I mean, then there's also benefit to being having a choke point where we have the massive wall of Raymond and Higlack um, with with um, Zeodana and um, Destria clobbering in the back and then we have two precise shooters and mage and all that kind of stuff which can reek so i, I suppose it depends on what we encounter um mm -hmm. and retreating we, we're going to go at slower speed which might be a problem i mean we're going at slower speed anyway so. yeah <laughs> if, so to that they're end, not hindered jonathan did you want aglor in the back just picking up the rear that's what I was thinking. I mean, we, we can, I mean, I was, that was just a theoretical. I'm not locked in on it, but okay. I was thinking Aguilar and Griffin can be the rear potentially. Okay. Aguilar and Tuki at the rear. He's got, he can, he's uh, more difficult to surprise. There you go. All right. Um, let's get, uh, we'll, we'll motion for um, Skandar to come down and check this wall. Oh, Skandar is like right here. I mean, we're just not moving okay. them all down at this point. She's right behind. She's in the so, guys, so Skandar, is she going to do a hasty search, or are you talking about a methodical 10-minute search? Let's do a hasty search first, and we can decide based on how that goes. All right. You can go blind ahead and send me, a blind, send me a blind GM roll, yeah. This would be a point where you might want to stop and listen, too, and see if you still hear moaning. Stop being a voyeur. I'm right there. Okay. Um, you do not uh, after your ten after your hasty search. You do not find anything. Okay. Shall we quiet uh, everyone hold, down hold and listen as well? Sure. Yeah. All right. Skandar, make the listen check. Okay. Um, you hear bubbles coming from the southeast. The sound kind of like all right, she'll pass on bubbles. You better hurry. Okay. Somebody was injured and now they've collapsed and they're falling into the water and they're drowning. That or it's a Zaharan bath down there, you know, sauna day. Yeah. All right, a geyser. Now I, hey, I now, go ahead, Nim. Go ahead, Nim. Yeah, no, we should be, we should probably prod in front of us just to make sure, you know, there's not like some hole that we're gonna walk into. Okay, fair point. And uh, we'll uh, make a point to uh, as we're stepping forward, we kind of stab at the ground with our swords. Okay. Yeah, Terenius and Kelsirius will be doing that with their their staffs as we're walking along. All That's right. a good idea. Yeah, I made a note. I need to get uh, Skandar never got a ten foot pole. Right. I need to buy her a ten foot pole. So uh so Higlack, when you get there, um so to the southwest, you um to the southwest you can see the bubbles there. Visible in the water right there. Okay. The water bubbles and churns. Is there any temp temperature uh, change in the water? And then uh, over here to the east, uh, it looks like it gradually shallow. Uh, gra the water gradually becomes more shallow and emerges onto dry land. 
Um, does you're at the edge of your vision, just at the very edge of the torchlight. It looks like there is a body half buried in the mud. Okay. Um, Alex, is there any particular smell coming from the bubbles? Um, no, the only thing you smell down here is fetid rot. Okay. Um, I am going to motion for Destria um, to hold this position here. Um, and then Raymond lets you and I check out this land up here. Where was the body? You, you should be able to see it on the map. Yeah, I, can see, I can see the bodies. Yeah. Looks like lots of hands and whatnot sticking out. Um, yeah, is that a wall that they're mm -hmm. sticking out of? Okay. Yeah, it's a mud. It's a the the mall. The walls are all caked with thick, thick, thick mud, and the bodies are embedded in the mud. I'm getting an aliens vibe here. Very aliens <laughs> vibe, yes. And um, and the ground is also thick mud, so movement remains reduced to by one half for everyone and two thirds for Zadar. Okay. okay. Now, when you say when you say, uh, are are they are the bodies moving? No. Like, like they're literally bodies. They are like they as are, in dead. They are dead cadavers that cadavers. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're they're bodies that are uh, in mud in an aliens like fashion. Like you know how like in aliens they have the bodies, you know, with the alien goo holding them up, and then things are going to rip out of their stomachs and attack you. This is the exact same kind of thing, except instead of alien goo, it's mud, and nothing has ripped out of their stomachs to attack you yet. Yet. <laughs> the operative term being yet. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to say, I'm going to whisper back to Destria, detect evil. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Yep. All right. Destria uh, starts detecting evil. All right. You detect evil in 180, nope, 360 degrees. Everywhere is evil. In fact, you might be in a blighted sinkhole of evil. Is that second or third? <laughs> That's the second. Okay, that was, yeah. You know, you're okay. in a lighted sinkhole of evil, man. <laughs> this makes her feel sick. Yes, yes. It's nauseating and horrific. Okay. Part of me is like advance and go ahead and start, you know, stabbing any of these cadavers in the head to to deal with it, part of me is like, let's not upset the swarm of probable zombies, uh, and then and just go southwest. But I mean, at a certain point, the only way out is through. Yeah. Are they uh, are or, they deeply embedded or stuck to it? Was it like a? Can we tell the difference between a cave-in or a mudslide where the wall collapsed on things and buried them, or they're just pasted to the wall? Um, it it looks uh, sort of imagine that they were mounted on the wall and then someone kind of painted mud over them. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, so hey Raymond, it, it feels like they could easily break it free. Hey, hey, Raymond, hand me a rock and I can I'll throw it at it if you like. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Since there's probably aren't any rocks in there. It's all mud. So I'll I'll throw a rock at I'll get a rock from Raymond and, and I'll toss one at the nearest cadaver to see if it does anything. While we're still a little bit away. Okay. So you chuck it and um it uh it hits the creature and um Okay, uh, so <laughs> let's go to initiative. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and suddenly the shit is hit the fan. Oh, man. 
Better to fight them now than when we're trying to get through them, right? I, I knew I should have done something. Uh, where did we go? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Pig Black and Raymond icons just disappeared. Oh, okay. Yeah, what are, you, what, are you trying to, what are you trying to say? I, was, I think you fell into the pit. Well, into a, yeah. into a deeper pit. <laughs> oh, suddenly you're covered in mud. <laughs> oh. Well, it's a good thing that we... Uh, triggered it right there before the, the squishies got it too close yeah right yeah that was my thought i'm not sure if it was reckless but uh my, my will is lower than it used to be so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so um same by casting uh hold on let me i don't think i have to declare for this but Okay. If you're saying turn undead, no, you don't have to. Okay. Okay. So, Raymond, you're up. Or, sorry, Kelsurius, you're up first at eight. Dude, what? Will you want, you want me to control him? Sure. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Yeah, he'll delay. Okay. Toothy? He will defend, um, or I should say he will, he will ready facing to the rear. Okay, Higlack? Higlack will defend. Okay, Griffin? Have you noticed that whenever we go into combat, all of our rear rank guys roll excellent initiative? <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Raymond? Uh, he's, yeah, he's Raymond is, yeah, I am going to rebuke. Let's go. All right, so it's very sad, Raymond. Because of the blighted sinkhole of evil, you count as four levels lower. So oh. you will you are rebuking as a mere first level character. Oh, dude. Well, I, I know what I know exactly what, what proficiency I'm going to have to get. <laughs> so go ahead and um, let's see. Go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Is it a d20? Oh, it's, it is a d20. Okay. Yeah. Big money. Oh. All right. <laughs> Oh, it's so close. It's a magic number, man. Oh. The oppressive chthonic darkness descends upon you, and the light of Aminar does not reach you. Oh, so harsh. All right. All right. So Zelikus the dog. He's he's back with Griffin. He's he'll he's still being Dude, carried. That hurt. That hurt so bad. Skandara? She is going to um, ready to shoot the first thing that moves. Okay. Agalor? She's gonna... Oh, goodness. I, uh, I think Agalor... Uh, Agalor's gonna delay for now. Okay, Terenius? Terenius is uh, also going to delay. Okay, Aria? Uh, well, let me see. Um, I guess she can shoot, right? Because nobody's in, nobody's engaged yet. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, then the, she's gonna she's gonna shoot at the closest uh, undead dude. She's gonna shoot at the closest muddy body. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, inventory, composite, bow, uh, roll. Oh! Okay, that's a good hit. All right, so the arrow thuds into the uh, dead chest of the dead thing. Okay, so um, at this point, so now it's up to them. So first one comes out of the wall. Anybody coming off hold? Or, yeah, sorry, Skandara. coming off ready? Skandara will shoot it. Okay. Oh, my goodness. All right. Her arrow misses. Anybody else? Anybody else on hold? On ready? Aguilar is going to take a shot, too. No, Aguilar was delaying, oh. not ready. So he can shoot after I attack. Okay. Ah, beautiful. Luck is with me today, guys. 
Oh, well, maybe not. I spoke too soon. Okay, so that's uh, one point of damage to... Actually, Raymond, what's your AC? Your AC is really high. Yeah, it's like 10. And I'm not even doing full defense. Is it 10? Yeah. Okay, so I actually missed you anyway. It's a 17. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, so at this point, Agalor, it sounds like you want to come off of hold and ready to attack the next thing that becomes visible. Yeah, that sounds like the appropriate thing to do right now. Okay. All right. Well, here comes another one. And it will attack Higlack. Miss. Okay. And here comes another one. And it will also attack Higlack. Mists. Okay. Another one comes out of the walls. Another one comes out of the walls. Another one comes out. Of the walls. Yeah, we got a block party here. Wah wah. Okay. Cool. So are those all on the same initiative? They were, everyone else had gone, so I was just moving them. So anyone who wanted to do a, uh, anyone who wanted to take an action can do so. Oh, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't oh, okay. gone yet. I'm, I'm done at three. Yeah. So. I, I ran through everyone, so. Oh, I, I didn't hear my name. I didn't hear, I hear the lower initiatives. <laughs> um, okay. But okay, but that's fine. I thought my, my initiative was really low anyway. Um, so uh, if Zeodon wants to go first, go ahead. I, I can go. Not as, as, it wasn't as low as the zombie initiative, John. Oh. I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's no difference here. So, yeah, Zeodon will move up and attack from the second rank with her glaive. Uh, boom. Uh, boom. Okay. She does six points. All right, so her glaive cuts into the creature. Uh, its torso is torn open and mud spills out. Um, it smiles at her toothlessly and oozing, uh, oozing gums with maggots on them kind of spilling out of its lips. Uh, that's awful. That's so, awful. Andravis will shoot. Now, if I shoot the first rank, that's a minus four, but if I shoot... The second rank of zombies, there's no penalty, correct? Because they're not engaged in melee? Um, you no, know, it's still minus four because you're shooting through. But I'm precise shooter, so I can shoot through. Oh, then there's no penalty. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So I will shoot the second rank. I'll shoot this guy just to declare one. Okay. Um, nice. Because I don't trust my accuracy. I need the money, the, the bonus there. <laughs> Does not matter. That's oh, awful. man. Awful. Uh, wow. So, and, and I've got. Destria, uh, can that can move into the second rank? Does anybody want to move into the second rank before I move Destria from the flank? Go ahead, and and Toothy will take up that position. Okay. Yep, and we'll do that. Okay. So that uses that's a double move for her because of the mud. She's moving at half speed in plate mail. Oh. oh. Okay. So. All right. Well, I mean, that's that is what it is. Yep. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Toothy, Toothy will try to move up in front of Skandara and take uh, the, that position that was just vacated as, let's see, as best as he can. Okay. As long as he can, he can double move as long as he yeah. can. And he's not in plate now. So, oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, oh, oh. I'm, I moved him and you moved him at the same time. Okay. So you're guarding the bubbles. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so I, Kels, Kelsurius is going to move just up to bring the light closer to both both of those venues. And I think Agalor, Agalor and, and Aria, you guys should probably collapse in also. Yeah, he, be Agalor, they around, they've, all, they've all moved. Okay. Agalor was going to be shooting at some point. So. Yeah, you can take your shot. 
Go ahead. Oh, so that's right. Is he at a minus four or is minus four? Yeah, for shooting through friends and cover. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, he hits. Give me damage. Nice. Okay. All right. An arrow thuds into one of the um, disgusting mud-covered zombies. Doesn't it? Doesn't make much uh, reaction to it. Obviously, being a zombie. All right. Next round. Uh, casting. Casting. Okay. All right. Skandara's up. Skandara now has precise shooting, and so she's going to see that. Uh, and Drava's just wounded one. And she's going to try to finish that one off. Where is Skandara? She's right here. Right in the middle. Oh, I see her. There she is. Yeah. And so she did two points of damage. She did two points of damage to the one that Andravas wounded. Yeah. And how much? And Andravas did how much to that one? Ah, uh, I'm not remembering. I'm scrolling up. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about. It. I'll just have you attack the most wounded one. Okay. So, um, it's it it's still in the fight, but um, it's twitching around spasmodically, suggesting the arrow may have come close to the zombie brainstem. All right, Toothy. Toothy is going to ready facing that uh, chasm to the south. Okay, Andravis. I'm going to scooch back just a little bit to give room for maneuver for anybody going anywhere, and then I'm going to shoot the one that Skandara just shot. Okay. Well, it rolled. I'm not seeing it on the... That's weird. I rolled a... I think it was a 17 and I did three... I rolled a three for damage. Are you I'm sure you don't it. have it on... Do you have it on blind jam? It's on public. It's weird. Yeah, I don't see it either. So, but I'll believe you. Okay. <laughs> what did uh, you roll? It was, it was like a up. 17. No, that, no that, was, that was the previous one. I rolled something like a 17 and the damage was three. Okay, I believe you. You have hit it, and the arrow goes into the creature's eye. The zombie slumps forward into the mud. You can cleave. Okay. Watch again, just in case. 15, and... Oh, that didn't even finish rolling. Maybe I should refresh. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of this, Jonathan. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll refresh. Yeah, the art pronunciation of Higlock's name is Higlockus. That's right. That's right. Um, I, I think it's decided. All right. So Zelikus, Arya. Um, Arya uh, will. Let me see. She will ready. Okay. Uh, to fire on any um, uh, on any threats that approach either from. I can't make a conditional like that. So from the south, west, in the direction of the bubbles. So, so okay, got it. All right, um, Agalor. Oh, I think Agalor needs to move in a bit closer, uh, and and do the same kind of thing. I think he's going to uh, move up in front of Arya and Damaris, Arya and Zelika. Sorry, and then. Uh, and from there, just ready to attack anything that comes up. Got it. Okay. Calcereus? Calcereus is going to attempt to spike the lantern to the wall where he is so that he can get two hands free using hammer and spike. Okay. No problem. Um, it splashes mud all over you and your lantern, but you have done so. Okay. Destria? Uh, Destria will attack uh, the one in front of uh, Raymond. Got it. Make your attack. Uh, da, 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 da. Inventory. Spear one-handed. Oh, melee? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a big hit. And she has um, disemboweled the zombie, which slumps over on her spear. 
So she can now cleave onto this one. All right, let's go. Destria. Okay, her second attack, unfortunately, misses. She's not able to get the spear extricated quickly enough. Uh, Terenius, you're up. You were casting. Terenius is casting uh, Mage Missile. Okay. Awesome. So uh, give me a D4 plus one and pick a zombie you'd like to target. Let me zoom in a bit here and see what I can see. There's one that's been wounded with two points. The others haven't been wounded. Yeah, I'm going to target the one that's been wounded. Play it safe. All right, I'm back oh. as as James. Because oh. Oh. I'm still in the game. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's really weird. All right, well, welcome, James. Um, okay, so Andravis, you still have a cleave. And... Um, so let him do his cleave first, and then we'll come back to you. So it might make a difference in terms of damage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it booted me out hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All that, and it's a miss. Tragic. Okay, so go ahead and now roll your d4 plus one there, Terenius. Ah, oh, it's killing me. I, I can, pretty much I kill this one, or I could do, do some damage on another one. Always kill. Uh, I'm going to go for killing them. So I'm targeting the damage one. Okay. Three points. All right. The uh, zombie lurches backward as your uh, miniature bolt of lightning thunders into it, but it is not yet destroyed. Okay. Higlack. I will attack the zombie directly in front of me. All right. Oh, I misunderstood what you said. I heard that as there is one with two points left. And, of course, I miss. Had only taken two. So. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Raymond? Yep. Yeah, oh, hold on. Your magic missile is only 1D4? 1D4 plus one always has been. Let's keep going. Okay. I thought for some reason it he got an extra one per level. That was, no. that was in the first edition. Now it just continues as long as he concentrates. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay. Uh, Raymond is uh, going to mace somebody. Okay. No, he's not. All right. Griffin. It's this blighted, it's this blighted sinkhole. Um, I think Griffin is still in the back. He will continue to guard the back. All right. Got it. Got it. Okay, well, now it is the time for my undead. Uh, I guess I'll... The top-down view looks like Leisure Suit Larry kind of guys. Like baldy, balding guys <laughs> with, the, with the mug cut on the sides. Yeah, they like, do. In, like, vests. Yeah, they do. Okay, so this one steps forward and attacks Raymond. Misses him. Okay, this one attacks Higlack. Misses him. Uh, yeah, deep, deep damage, man. That's fierce. This one attacks Higlack. Misses yeah. him. And then uh, the second wave are ready to attack anybody who gets through. And then as are the third wave that has now come into sight. Okay. Next round. Any spell casting? I'm concentrating on my spell. Maintaining yep. it. Then on my end. Got it. Zayadana's up first. I'm going to glaive. Okay. Let's go. Uh, and boom. 
Bam! There it is. All right, what's the damage? Seven. Ooh. Okay, so that's a good hit. That uh, she beheads uh, one of the zombies. Um, the head topples down into the mud, and maggots crawl out of it. The body falls limp, and she cleaves. All right, let's go. Oh, but the uh, AC one oh. is n- is enough, and so she does five damage. So she opens up a great tear in its bowels, which spill out, and um, disgusting, creepy crawlers uh, spill out of the bowels with it, and it kind of belches up mud, but it's not yet dead. Ugh. Okay, Kelsurius is up. Kelsurius, now that the lantern is on the wall, he, he he draws his crossbow and fires it. He doesn't have precise shooting, but he can, but he can still shoot. Okay. Yeah, yep, he can still shoot into the, the, the mass. All right. Sadly, it's a miss. Toothy. Uh, maintain ready. Gandara. Uh, she will shoot um, one of the ones since I was. I'm not sure if there's any in the in the second rank which are injured or not since I was. Out of there, there a little bit. No. Um, okay, but she'll okay. So we'll start priming one of those. Um, okay. Um, oops, I'm still a little bit discombobulated. Sorry. It's okay. That's a good hit. Okay. So she does three points. All right. That is an injured zombie as its arrow pierces into its breast. Okay. Ogalore. Should Ogalore come up to the second rank with his spear? Can he try to squeeze in there somewhere? He can, he can get in there. He won't be able to attack this round, but he can get in there. I think he's going to be needed up there more than in the back. Yeah. yeah. Ogalore pushes forward. All right. Arya. He's going to hold her ready. Griffin. Uh, he will delay. Zelikus. Zelikus is with Griffin. Okay. Andravis. I'll shoot the one that uh, Skandara softened up. Okay. And oh. whiff. Oh. Higlack. Higlack will attack. Okay. Come on. Higlackus attackus. Oh, Jesus. Dude. <laughs> Raymond. Uh, Raymond's gonna try to lay down a smack. Let's see. Uh, one handed. Boom. There it is. Oh, seven points. Brutal hit. He kills, so you can cleave. All right. That's what I'm talking about. That's. So you swing your mace down and crack its skull and gibbets of brains spatter all over you and uh, it slumps into the mud. Um, your second swing, however, the zombie just takes it on the shoulder and isn't hurt. Okay. Oh. Destria. So Destria. Right here. Yep. yep. She's going to do the spirit. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Okay, she is hit. She does seven oh. points. All right, that zombie is badly injured. Um, the spear almost took it through the spine. It's spasmodically jerking. Terenius? Okay, he's going to guide the mage missile to another wounded zombie. Okay, make that roll. D4 plus one. Well. Two points is enough. Zombie's dead. Ooh. Okay. Lightning explodes its brain. Its skull shatters. Zombies are up. So here we go. One, two, three zombies. Sounds and... like fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make my attacks. So this time we're going to do two attacks on Raymond and one attack on Higlack. So Raymond. Uh oh. Uh-oh. AC AC ten for two points. Oh, uh, AC ten for six points. Wow, so he took oops. eight points total. Okay, and then Higlack. 
missed. Man, missed. you guys have given me all the good rolls. Okay, any good. casting? Just concentrate. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no casting. Okay. So eight points, you say? Yeah, total. All right, Agalor is up. All right, some spear action. Yep. All right. Oh, oh. There. Beautiful. Nice. Agalor kills one of the zombies with a savage thrust of his spear. He can take a cleave. He will. Well, maybe not. Uh, unfortunate. Zayadana. All right. This is more of that glaive action. Let's go. Oh, nice. Nice. All right. The zombie falls to one knee, almost dead. Okay. Kel Would that Thurian. be because it lost the lower leg? <laughs> Something like Kel that. Calcerius will shoot will shoot into the rear rear rank of the zombies. Okay. Miss Griffin. Uh he'll delay. Raymond. Uh laying the smack. Okay. Uh let's see here. No, nothing. Tragic. All right, Terenius. Okay, he's going to uh Guide the mage missile again. Okay. Bam, another zombie down. Skandara. Um, if that wounded one that she was shooting at is still alive, she'll shoot it again. Otherwise, she'll go for a fresh one. Uh, go for a fresh one. All and right. she hits a fresh one. Woo! Because I changed the die colors. From James's Five points. Movie. Nice. Ugly purple. Wouldn't that be orange. hilarious if now that you're logged in as James, you roll really well? Okay. Well, my so, first roll was a one, so. Yeah. <laughs> Don't right. roll the red dice. Toothy. Maintain ready. Higlack. Higlack will attack. Okay. Higlackus attackus. Uh. It's AC1. AC1 is enough, and your <laughs> savage blow just cuts it in two. Its legs go one way, and its torso goes another. Mounds of dead sinking into the mud. Do you wish to step forward to cleave? No. I will hold the line. All right, you go back to ready. Destria. All right. She is... Uh, uh, actually, she's going to ready, because there's nobody in range right now. Yep. Zelikus holding Aria. Uh, Aria is ready, uh, staying ready for a, a threat from the southwest. And Andravis. He'll shoot the one that Skandara shot. Uh, Ooh, AC1. AC1 for five. So. Nice. Does they kill? All right. The arrow takes it in its throat, severs the spine, and the body topples over. Take a cleave. Oh, good cleave. Okay, Softened another zombie is wounded. Yeah. Okay, so the zombies are up now, and we go one, two, three. This time we'll do two attacks on Higlack, but anybody on hold? I believe we had a Drakia, uh, a Destria on yeah. hold. Destria is on hold, and she will spear. Okay. Boom and boom. All right, so sadly oh. she misses. Anybody else on hold? Piglack was on, pig on ready. 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 Yeah, yeah. ready. So go ahead. All right. So we see. I'm out. Do. Uh, oh. All right. Very sad. Okay. <laughs> so two attacks on Higlack this round. One and two. And one attack on Raymond. Yes. Ooh. Okay. All of my zombie friends have missed. Okay, you seem to be finally cutting your way through all of the waves. There's only five left that are visible. And we go to the next round. 
Okay, Andravis is up. All right, he'll shoot um, the one that I softened up last round. Oh, no, I think that's okay. in melee, so he'll shoot the one behind. All he'll right. Shoot a that's good. One. He hits him with five. Okay, good hit. Arrow thuds into its shoulder, and one arm falls limp. Kelsurius. Kelsurius fire into the rear rank also. So Kelsurius gets a... Long range fires. AC five Stop minus four for shooting through. Okay, he hits good. Okay, he has also wounded it. Another arrow, another crossbow quarrel threads into a Destria. Boom! Let's go. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Destria spears it through, almost kills it, but at the last minute, the creature lurches and she misses the spine, but it's it's very badly damaged. Toothy. Maintain ready. Zaydana. All right. Let's, uh, glaving. Go. Oh. 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 Zaydana. All right. Zaydana with the glaive. Yeah, those take two ladies out. are cleaning up shop. Just behead right. one and take your cleave. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's another. Wow. <laughs> Zayadana, do you want to step forward and cleave, uh, cleave again? Oh, no. She's going to ready on her third cleave. All right, so she goes back to ready. Okay, Skandara. Oh, she'll soften up the one that, uh, that Andara's hurt. All right, it's now dead. Ugh. Aria? <laughs> does she get a cleave? Uh, oh, she does get a cleave. Yes, 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 she does. All right, she'll cleave onto the other one that's not engaged. Yep. Ah, uh, and that one misses. Okay, Aria? I think. Yeah. Uh, Aria ma maintains her ready. Okay. Higlack. Higlack will attack the one in range. See if a different dice color works. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Higlack beheads it. And, and, I guess and he will ready his cleave for whenever somebody comes in range. All right. So we'll just advance to me coming in range. And uh, so Raymond Higlack. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Higlack. Since you were ready. Oh, oh. <laughs> my goodness. Damn. Okay, wow, that battle turned really fast there all of a sudden. So uh, I have faith in our shield wall. <laughs> oh. oh, the Raymond might yeah. need a medic. Medic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm at 18 out of 26, so um, no, no one has any sympathy for you whatsoever. Then, I know, right now, <laughs> but, but you know, I'm telling you, this is one of those cases because there was this one fight where I made it through with like one hit point. So, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, I, yep. So, so a heal, a comfrey would be would be uh, helpful. To the into the dry ground, check it out, and she can do heal. Consolidate in there. What do you guys think? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, bud, move yourselves in, guys. So oh, serious takes the lantern off the wall. Yeah, okay. and while while we're doing the healing, I mean, th these bubbles are kind of like, what's up with these bubbles? They're just bubbling away. I mean, it could be, you know, just gas escaping from the earth, dude. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I, I say we press on since 
This is okay. sound opposition. Let's yeah, let's 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 get up on the high on the dry ground and check out what we can see here. Get everybody up and put everybody in. Yeah, my yep. computer's still having issues. I'm uh, looks like Andravis finally logged off, so I might try going coming back in as him. But um, I can't see Willie, so I'm going to refresh and try to come back again. Once Griffin's on high on the ground, he'll put Zelikos on the floor. So okay. Um, but I'm going to be right back. Right All right, Alex, I assume that there are no more zombies pasted into the walls up here. Um, there are still some limbs and feet and whatnot uh, sticking through the mud, but no zombies are emerging to attack you at this time. At this time. At this time. Should we poke and prod at the limbs just to make sure they don't move? <laughs> yeah. Let's wait until after we have uh, Raymond healed up and we've regained our formation. All right. We're not just going to high five them as people idly walk past. <laughs> <laughs> high five and arm falls on the ground. Right while Hyapsara is the only one near it. I can't select anything. Okay, well, let's just assume that everybody's up on the on the dry ground. So the first, so Alex, the first thing Hybsar will do is use a wound wart on. Raymond, an attempt to cure light wounds. Okay. Medically. So she has healing two, which would be 18. She gets plus two for the wound work, plus one for the chest, right? So it's a 15 plus. Yes. Well. Oh. She says, she says, your grievous wounds are beyond my ability to help. Wow. <laughs> then she will treat him with a comfrey. All right. One is better than nothing. Like I said, I've, uh, right. I've survived, I've survived fights with one because of one hit point. So oh, it's true. It's true. Well, then she can use one of her spells of Cure Light Wounds on Raymond. Okay. And that's D6 plus one, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So one, two, three. So 22. Okay. All right. That... That should be. Good to go. Good. Yep. What are you up to now? 22 out of 26. So. Okay. Yeah, that, that should hopefully hold us, hold us over. Oh, depending on what kind of undead is down here, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> okay, what's up next, guys? I'm going to suggest we press on and keep moving through yep. this passageway. Okay. So I had a thought that maybe we, we'd we want to try to avoid contact with the walls and the hands and, and try not to trigger a, any potential thing right. to get out on us. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> You're going to move cautiously and try not to trigger anything jumping out at you. Right. I think that might be smart not to brush up against the walls. Agreed. Okay. I will assume you're doing that. You don't have to sort of uh, play doctor like that game from Mattel or whatever. Right. So you can just <laughs> Operation. Operation. Uh, yeah. yeah. Worst <laughs> game. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, uh, Raymond, your spell has now worn off. 
have it on just in case. Although these zombies are bludgeoning, not piercing, but that's all right. <laughs> so you're casting it again? No, 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 no. I'm not casting. Oh, okay. I was just, I was just thinking out loud about, you know, I chose piercing because of the swarms, but no, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I when I come around this bend, it looks like there's a lot more zombies in the wall here. Am I seeing that correctly? A lot more zombies in the wall. Like here, oh. it looks like there's more in the way of no. There's you're not you're it's uh, there's nothing there. That was just a uh, uh, okay. Just making sure. Uh, yeah. Help the pool back. Okay. Yes, the water ahead deepens. And, okay. Uh, uh refresh real quick because my yeah my screen is just a uh, little off so okay well i'm trying to move aria i can't see anything with <laughs> i don't think there's any lanterns back there so i can't really move her i think i can guess oh i might be able to guess it right there we go i'm getting there so our marching order do we decide to put aglor back in the rear again or do we want him up front in the second rank i'm feeling like we're not too much danger in the in the rear so, I mean, I think probably up in the second rank is fine. Yeah. Did all right. Is is Newton there, or is he, did he block out his screen, or did he go? Is it another glitch? It's a glitch. Can uh, can you guys hear me? Oh yeah. yeah. Yep. I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, okay. I refreshed and that fixed it. Yes. It's, it's last week. I had no none of the problems that you, that you guys were having. This week, I'm having a lot of them. So it's it's sharing the wealth. Frustrating. Yep. All right. Well, I think we take a spear and gently probe the water, see how deep it is. Okay. Um, so right where you're probing your spear, it looks to only be about six inches deep, but you can tell that the ground is sloped and stepped. And so it looks to reach probably uh, waist deep uh, within 10 feet or so into the water. I'm seeing something that looks like more dry land and some something creepy over there. I can't quite make yeah, out what it is. Yep. Should we toss a torch over? We'll make it out, Alex. Um, so we need to get closer. Need to get closer. Or we can toss a torch. Let's do it. Higlack will go ahead and advance yeah. into the water. Let's, let's slowly start moving in. Okay. All right. Stop there for a sec. Okay, so hang back. Um, so as you wade into the three foot deep pool of murky water, you spot a large island of muck and bones. Um, the whole island seems to be made of congealed mud um, and uh, the bones of many, many dead people. I sense a rehash of, not, unlike zombies, it'll be skeletons this time. <laughs> yeah, I think. A lot, a lot, a lot of skeletons out there on that there island. All right, well, let me see if I can... Tr well, I mean... I mean, I don't know. I don't go, know. Ahead, go ahead, everyone, and finish your move, and then we'll go into initiative. Okay, yeah, because I was going to rebuke, so... Yeah. Oh, that's right. You didn't fail your rebuke. You just only rebuked one, right? Well, I, I can only do it once per engagement if I fail. Oh, it's by engagement. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, it's by it's by engagement. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to pull Agalor to the front, or do we do we decide to leave him in the back? I know there was discussion, but I think I was refreshing, so I don't know what the final decision on that was. I think we said that there was a like. I, I was kind of siding with Sean and said bring him up towards the front. Should we move in the second rank then? Uh, we just lost somebody. Oh man, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. It's it's skeletons. Oh, because 
half damage for a lot of the stuff. If it's pierce for piercing, yeah. 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 So, so spears are going to have a hard time. I don't have any wonderful explosion spells. Don't skeletons usually have fewer hit points than zombies? Am I remembering that correctly? They do. Yeah. Skeletons don't have um, don't have any particular protection against uh, piercing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. In some editions of Dungeon Dragons, they do, but in X, they do not. Ah, okay. Yay, X. Okay, well, listen, guys. It's actually midnight, and this is probably will be a large battle, so might be we should stop here and restart and start next session with the battle. Um, uh, otherwise, probably, midnight? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it, time flew. Where'd it go? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it went to the debate about how to get down into the pit. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah, note to self. Next time we have a great idea to uh, cast Thunderclap down into the pit, everyone should move back a little further. <laughs> like, there's no reason we have to be standing out in the open. Yeah. Well, there's just no win, right? Because if you're yeah. not all standing out in the open and then the wizard dies alone, everyone's like, well, that sucks. We should have been standing closer. <laughs> or the bats come back when we're trying to exfiltrate and then we have to yeah, come in. Yeah. No, it's hard. It's hard for sure. Okay. Well, we will stop here with the horror about to get horrific. <laughs> as uh, the entire island seems to be clattering to life. And as you can tell from looking at it, that's a lot of skeletons. Oh, man, these, the rebuke better work this time. Even with the minus four, it's a 50-50. 50-50, yep. Yep. Does it destroy or does it um, does it um, turn them? No, it, tur it turns 2d6 hit die worth, I think. Oh, 2d6, yeah. It immediately rolls 2d6 for a total number of hit die. But I can keep doing it until I fail. So, right. yeah. Well, that was your mistake. You shouldn't have failed the first roll. First yeah, roll. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, the funny thing is, if I wasn't at a minus four, I automatically rebuke skeletons and zombies. But, yeah. but this is this is a really bad place to be. So, yeah. Yes. But yes, you know, but you know, there's a proficiency for this. So. Oh. Righteous turning. <laughs> Righteous turning. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Yeah. I was thinking about that other entrance because the information that we have is that undead have been getting out of, if, if this is what we're looking for, they've been getting out of here somehow. So there's probably some sort of other exit entrance. Could be climbing the vines, maybe. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Do zombies climb? Can they? <laughs> <laughs> They could they could climb vines if there's some more powerful undead ordering them. Yeah. Oh. You mean what we're going to be fighting? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't mean anything like that. I was just clarifying a question that uh, James asked. <laughs> um. All right. Well, that was good. You guys made your way. Uh, you guys made good progress into uh, the fetid pit. Um, hacking your way through those zombies and dealing with the bats. Yeah. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. I just hope we don't encounter some mighty kobolds that just like finish us off. Kobold! <laughs> come on! No, I mean, you guys aren't too hurt, right? I mean, what? Yeah. Ray Raymond's a little bit down. That's all right. Everyone else. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, some of the, yeah. I mean, Griffin's down a little bit. He's, he's way in the back. Um, and Travis is down one point, I think, in Skandara, too, from the bats. But yeah. um, pretty strong. And they're also yeah, pretty far yeah. back. So unless the front collapses, we'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, when has the front ever collapsed? <laughs> uh, against Zakiti. Yeah, no, it did collapse against Zakiti. And also against the <laughs> demon... Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so it, no need yeah. no need to dwell on past errors. It's uh, there was there was that time with the dragon too. We'll see yeah. yeah. Also, when the when when the the rat swarm tore through the front line and killed all your workers, that was pretty funny too. 
<laughs> well, there, there technically wasn't a front line then. That was. <laughs> oh no, that's right. That's right. The workers were the front line. That's yes, right. That's, yes, they were. That's, yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll see how it goes next session, guys. Yep. Good night, y'all. Good night. All right. Good night. night. Come cheer up, my lads, tis for glory we strive To drive back the darkness and keep hope alive To honor we call you as free men, not slaves For who are so free as who can swing their glaives? Honor and steel is our mail Amalar's light on man We always are ready, steady boys, steady We'll fight and we'll conquer again and again We delve into tombs and put them to the flame With blood and cold steel we these lands will reclaim We rebuke our fell foes, everyone we will slay Till Amana's light makes the night into day All our steel is our mail Amana's light our man We always are ready Steady, we'll fight and we'll conquer again and again They say they'll enslave us, these terrible foes They frighten our women, our children, our foes But if should their foul legions in darkness march out The Great Brotherhood shall them all put to rout Our own steel is our mail And on ours light our men we always are ready, steady boys, steady We'll fight and we'll conquer again and again Eleanor triumphant, his light rules the world His standards set forth and his banners unfurl So come cheer up my lads, with one heart let us cheer The great brotherhood in this glorious year We always are ready, steady boys, steady We'll fight and we'll conquer again and again All our steel is our mail Amanar's light, our men We always are ready, steady boys, steady We'll fight and we'll conquer again and again